everybody and welcome back to my channel my name is Elise and I know I haven't been posting for the past couple of months school has been extremely hectic and I apologize and I will try and make more videos ever since this whole coronavirus outbreak and school has been moved remotely I actually came back to California and I'll be here for the next couple of months and I will try and make more content for you all so many of you have requested the video on how I study for nursing school this video has been requested by many of you through the comments and my DMs so I thought I'll take the time to go through my study materials and what I do to get A's in class and I hope you guys enjoy it first up let me show you how I take notes during lectures so depending on the size of the PowerPoint I usually import it into OneNote as you can see here and this class is advanced physiology and pathophys so this is my cardiovascular pathophysiology PowerPoint so I have here the disorders of the blood vessels and circulation so I import the powerpoints in here and then on the side here you can see the notes that I have for this one slide that the professor goes through in lecture and sometimes when there's too much I leave it in the bottom too um, I do have a couple typos here usually because the professor is going so fast I usually type the notes in bullet points because it helps me visualize what disorders go under what. So for example, acute vessel obstructions, I have here Raynaud's phenomenon. I can categorize Raynaud's phenomenon into acute vessel obstruction, if that makes sense. So this is what I do usually for most of the classes, so then I put the notes here. Sometimes if I need to annotate the notes, I will actually import the notes into my iPad, which I will show you later and how I annotate that. Moving on to the iPad, I usually import it into here, notability, so let me tap in. And so here you have the um, slides about EKG strips. So I like to annotate this because it makes it visualize a lot better. So for example, here we have sinus bradycardia. I can count the number of QRS peaks and then I can write down the primary actions, what I need to do and what meds to give for that, so atropine. And then moving on to V-fib and then um, third degree heart block and then V-tag, A-fib and stuff like that. So with stuff like this, I like to bring it into notability on my iPad and annotate on that. Another thing I really like to do is to take notes on the iPad. So let's go in here. This is my new and improved HESI anatomy study guide. So if you're interested on in how I study for this, please check out my first video regarding how to study for the HESI exam. I will put the information to this study guide below in the description. What I really like to do is to import images from Google and then put it into Notability. I trace over this and label what is important about the diagram. So here you can see the different valves and the atrium and the ventricle that I like to label in. And then here I write down how the blood flows through the heart. What I really like about this is that I'm able to draw, make it pretty and color coordinate, which helps me learn the material much faster. So after the lectures that day or later that weekend, if I do procrastinate, I try to put down all the notes that I took in class into flashcards using Anki or into my notebook. I love using Anki. This is not sponsored by Anki, but the reason why I love it so much is because it doesn't let me waste time on materials I already know. This is what it looks like on the computer screen. Um, you can actually pay for a version on your phone and this is what I usually do. Let's go into OB exam two, for example, and then you go to study now. So what can contribute to postpartum hemorrhage? So probably retained placenta or like uterine atonies, stuff like that. And then you press the space bar. So yeah, so you have here tone, uh, uterine atony, um, retained placenta, lacerations, coagulation problems. So here you can see the three options. You can go to again, good or easy. So since I got that, but I didn't get the later two, I'm gonna put as good. So it's gonna show up in 10 minutes. But so this is a really good way to test what you do know and what you don't know. 
I take my notes usually in this notebook because with this binder, I can add a new page. This is my OB notes. You can see here, I start off with antepartum and then I write down signs of pregnancy, presumptive signs, probable signs, and positive signs. I usually do this along with the PowerPoint and I can write down basically everything on the PowerPoint that I think is important. With so this, we're going over antepartum complications. So there is spontaneous abortions, ectopic pregnancy, diabetes that may happen so I like to go pretty in depth with all of these for the disorders I like to write down a drug that does treat it like for example mag sulfate we want to give that they're having preeclampsia or eclampsia to reduce the chances of seizure and here I would write down the therapeutic goal is five to eight milligrams so this is just more complications that may happen antepartum so this is basically how I take notes in my notebook so this basically wraps up how I study. We usually have exams every week or every week and a half and if we're lucky every two weeks. And this is usually how I spread out my studying. I start by writing out the notes during the lecture and then afterwards I put it into flashcards in Anki and then afterwards I put it into notebook. And a couple days before I try to review a couple times. And sometimes there are practice questions in the textbook that I use to help me really solidify what I do know by testing myself. And then yeah, just make sure you get a lot of rest before your exam and you should be okay. Now I'm starting to study for the NCLEX. So I recently purchased UWorld and every other day or so I try to do 10, 15 questions. That's not that much, but I just thought that I should start a little bit at least. I haven't been scoring very high. Um, let's try one together. This is what my UWorld looks like. Let's try adult health. And as you can see here, there's multiple systems over here. Uh, so let's do endocrine and let's do two questions. So you can generate the test. Okay. A nurse cares for a client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes mellitus who came to the emergency department with complications of diabetic ketoacidosis. So I'm, I can highlight it. So after checking the blood glucose, what prescription should the nurse implement first? So I'm not going to do the urinary catheter first because I don't think that's a priority right now, even though that is uh, something to consider later on. Um, I think it's important to obtain the serum potassium level, but I don't think that should be the first. So I think depending on the blood glucose levels, you can see whether you need to prepare an insulin drip or not. But I think the first step should be to start an IV line, and so I would cross out these two too. So yeah, as you can see here, the difference between DKA, hyperosmolar hyperglycemia, and the differences between that. Say you're not familiar with this topic, you can highlight it and then add to flashcards, and I usually put it in the back. So then front, I can write a question like, what is DKA? and then I can save that and then that would save into all the flashcards. Let's do another question. So the nurse cares for a client admitted to the hospital due to confusion. The client has a non-metastatic um, lung mass and a diagnosis of SIADH. Which action should the nurse expect to implement? So we know that SIADH means a lot of water retention because it's an inappropriate amount of ADH present. With increased ADH, they also have increased aquaporin, which means they have a decreased plasma osmolarity. So they have hyponatremia as well. Let's go through this together. So fluid bolus. They are retaining a lot of fluid. So do we want to add more fluid onto it? Probably not. So two, we do want to restrict the fluid because they are holding on to a vast amount of fluid in their body. Um, salt restriction, no, we don't want to have salt restriction because they are hyponatremic with SIADH. So seizure precaution, so yes, because with electrolyte imbalance, that is a complication. And strict record of fluid intake and output, yeah. So it gives you a reasoning of SIADH and for SIADH treatments, you can have these. So again, if you are unfamiliar with this, you can add it to a new card. It's how I've been studying on UWorld and I hope you guys enjoyed this.
this wraps up how I study for school. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay safe out there and wash your hands. And I hope you're all doing well during this quarantine time. Please feel free to reach out if you want to just talk or have any comments or advice on how to study for the NCLEX. Please let me know. I hope this video was very helpful for you all and see you next time.